Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey, and today we are going to discuss Diebel and Alzheimer's disease, and if Diebel causes Alzheimer's disease. So I'm sorry I haven't been uploading as much recently, I've just started work and it's been quite hectic this year, especially at the beginning of the year because there are more cases, things like that, but I have managed to free up more time and I shall be making videos. Um, not as frequent as I use, not as frequently as I used to, but but I will make them nonetheless, um, just because I don't have as much time to go through the research, and um, but I will try my best. So today we're discussing Alzheimer's and Diebel because it kind of harps on the whole trend of people talking about Trambolone and its relation to Alzheimer's disease. And not a lot of people know that there was a study done on Diebel and Androlone and testosterone was included in that one. And it was an in vitro study, so it was like a test tube study on rat cells. and. This study was done to investigate whether or not Diebel or Nandrolone were toxic to the neurons, or just brain tissue. So both studies in Trambolone and this one are kind of low forms or low quality evidence, essentially because neither are done in humans and neither are randomized. These are essentially laboratory studies. They do help a little, but they're still recommendations shouldn't be made off of them. So the Trambolone study was done in rats and this was done in rat cells, so the trend study is a bit better in quality, but still both are low forms of evidence, and if we use the TREND study to make recommendations against TREND because it may cause Alzheimer's disease, I think we should possibly do that with Diebel and Decker, and I'll show you why now. So I will show you this study. This is the study. Um, so essentially they looked at the neurotoxic effect of testosterone, Diebel, or methane Drostenolone and Nandrolone or DECA. But remember they didn't just look at neurons and a lot of studies forget this, that neurons aren't the only important cell when looking at brain health and stuff. You, A lot of the cells found in the brain are supporting cells like um, astrocytes and things like that. They all help support neurons and this study looked at that. So from the get-go testosterone when used at physiological you know, therapeutic levels is actually protective against neurotoxicity and um, things like Alzheimer's. And I'll show you why in a second that it's not only testosterone that's neuroprotective, but the um, estrogen. But testosterone itself can be neuro, uh, neuroprotective. So from these results, they looked at different forms of the drugs. They took testosterone or Diebel and they they tested testosterone or Diebel on the neurons, but they also had these BSA alternatives, which essentially means they, they, that they didn't pass through the cell membrane, essentially, because they were trying to exclude the fact that the steroid might go into the brain or into the cell and cause damage that way. So they wanted to see if it could cause damage through the receptors on the surface of the cells. So from this, they looked at various concentra concentrations of these drugs, and Diebel seemed to be the most damaging. So it was toxic at a much lower concentration, and what was interesting is this BSA derivative, essentially, that doesn't go into the neuron, seemed to be even more toxic. So it was more toxic at a lower concentration, which is interesting, which means that it's not necessarily the drug going into the nucleus of the cell and causing destruction that way. It could be through membrane receptors and secondary pathways. And Diebel seem to be a lot more toxic than testosterone and nandrolone. Nandrolone and testosterone, interestingly, had similar concentrations at which they cause neurotoxicity. And yes, testosterone did cause neurotoxicity, but the, di the difficulty with the study is that <laughs> it was 
done in cell cultures, and it's difficult to translate these concentrations they used into a dosage that a human would take in. So these dosages could be exceedingly high, but it's just important to note these effects. So what they also test was, tested was how these steroids were causing toxic effects to the brain, and it would seem that when they added an androgen receptor antagonist, like flutamide, and flutamide is this, they sometimes use it in prostate cancer and things like that, essentially blocks the androgen receptors, and when they added that in, the neurotoxicity of these drugs were almost nil. But what was interesting is that d was not affected by fl flutamide. It actually potentiates these neurotoxic effects by stimulating glucocorticoid receptors, or essentially the cortisol receptor. But again, I just want to mention that this experiment is slightly flawed in the fact that it's direct inoculation and things like that, and doesn't replicate what happens in the human body. Furthermore, what is they did test to try and make it as applicable to humans as possible is that they used a pulsatile manner, so the concentration wasn't high 24-7. That was what they did initially, and they found that to be toxic. But when they used it in a pulsatile manner, nandrolone and testosterone seemed to be quite safe. They caused no neurotoxicity. However, d seemed to cause neurotoxicity, no matter whether it was pulsatile or not. And this, and if you know about Diebel, you take it in a pulsatile manner. You take it just before a workout and it works within an hour and it is out of the body in almost five hours. And that seems to be neurotoxic. Then they did another test. They wanted to see if these drugs or steroids would protect against the protein known as amyloid beta. And that may ring bells for some people because it is amyloid beta that, or the amyloid beta hypothesis, is the hypothesis that is used to kind of explain Alzheimer's. And what was interesting is that testosterone at physiological or superphysiological dosages was protective against amyloid beta. However, as soon as they added flutamide, the, the androgen receptor antagonist, or an aromatase inhibitor, the effect was essentially disappeared. It was attenuated. So this kind of says that testosterone is neuroprotective against Alzheimer's via direct stimulation of the androgen receptor as well as estrogen receptors. And we already know this. We know that the estrogen receptor beta, not alpha, beta, is very important in, neuro in neuroprotection. However, what was of concern is that nandrolone and d seem to both make the effect of amyloid beta protein worse, unlike testosterone. They made it more destructive, because this protein's already destructive, however they made it even more destructive. So essentially, uh, nandrolone and d made the amount of amyloid beta protein required to cause damage to the brain a lot lower. So, in summary, this study isn't the best study, but I think it's important for us to take it into account, especially since we always mention how Trembolone could cause brain damage and Alzheimer's disease, and no one mentions this study, because both are almost on the same level of evidence. And this does not mean these drugs will cause this effect because we need long-term studies and placebo control trials eventually leading to systematic reviews, but it's just important to note that perhaps d and Nandrolone should not be used long-term at superphysiological dosages. But as I explained, these concentrations they used are difficult to convert into human equivalents. And again, these drugs don't di aren't directly inoculated onto the brain, but it's just important to take this into consideration as we seem to take precaution with trend and not running trend year-round because of these possible the 
the possible potentiation of Alzheimer's disease. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you take this into consideration when picking your steroid. Obviously the best steroid is nothing, but this is just to add to your knowledge on steroids. So I'll see you in the next video, thanks for